This Week on Waterways. Mosquito Control in the Florida Keys. Since the beginning of time, humans have sought to dominate their surroundings. Through ingenuity and intelligence, humans have sought to manipulate and change the natural world to conform to their desires. Recently, people have come to understand that dominating the natural world is not as important as finding a way to live in balance with it. Nowhere is this more evident than with the management of mosquitoes in the Florida Keys. Mosquitoes can be annoying. Their bites can cause great discomfort. But most importantly, mosquitoes can transmit some of the most deadly diseases known to humankind. Monroe County has a subtropical environment and is home to approximately 45 species of mosquitoes. A few of these species create sufficient problems that require the need to control their populations. The earliest attempts at mosquito control in the Florida Keys date back to 1929, when settlers built a bat tower in Sugarloaf Key. They thought by importing thousands of bats to live in the tower, the bats would feed on the huge populations of local mosquitoes. However, when the bats were released into the bat tower, they all flew away. A much better idea materialized when the Florida Keys Mosquito Control District was established by referendum in 1950. Our uh, primary mission in controlling mosquitoes in the Florida Keys is to number one, prevent any harmful uh, uh, or ill effects on the population here uh, from disease uh, transmission by the mosquitoes. The mosquito, in most cases smaller than a dime, kills more men, women, and children than any other creature on this planet. More than one million people die annually as a result of mosquito bites. Another responsibility is to make sure that the people that live or visit Florida are protected from uh, the uh, annoyance by mosquitoes. And that comes across to the public as being our primary uh, mission. But that's not really the, uh, the primary mission. That's just one that I would say has uh, probably equal importance to uh, the, the disease transmission. The list of mosquito-borne diseases is long. In the Florida Keys, the diseases that have the most likelihood of appearing are encephalitis, West Nile virus, and dengue virus. Outbreaks in dengue fever occurred recently in the Caribbean, not far from the Florida Keys. So should Keys residents be worried? I would not say worried. I would say be, be cognizant. Recognize that they are a threat, a potential threat. Uh, right now in the Florida Keys, we haven't had a lot of activity. Uh, about three, four years ago, we had a couple cases, human cases of West Nile virus, and there were some dead birds that were found that were infected with West Nile virus. But it really, we really did not get a big uh, outbreak like they had, for example, up in Dade County or up in the northern parts of Florida. The Florida Keys Mosquito Control District leads the nation in their abilities and techniques. There are very few mosquito control agencies that face the same challenges as the 75 full-time professionals on the district staff. These unique challenges 
prompted the multifaceted attack that the Florida Keys Mosquito Control District has developed. Mosquito control is uh, achieved by three basic methods. The first, and in, in order of preference to do them, the first is source reduction, reducing areas where mosquito larvae can actually develop into adults. The second is larviciding, controlling them by whatever means in the larval stage before they become flying adults. They're going to uh, bite people or animals. And last, uh, but a very necessary component also is adult control using uh, chemical pesticides to actually kill flying adults. Prevention is always the best medicine. That is why the district spends so much time in the field, eliminating potential breeding grounds and educating the community about their own backyards. Standing water is mosquito nirvana, bird baths, pet food bowls, old tires, untreated swimming pools, trash cans, and lids, boats with sitting water, broken gutters, even large leaves that have fallen to the ground. All of these mini ecosystems match and mimic mosquito breeding sites found in nature. Standing water is like mosquito nirvana, it's mosquito heaven. Uh, standing water that started to get a little polluted, a little bit of bacterial activity going, maybe some algae in there, uh, they love it. The female mosquito, when she's egg bound, she's looking to lay her eggs, this looks like, this is like maternal reward from heaven. She'll lay her eggs there. The larvae, it's perfect nursery. Another thing is people like to put yard waste, grass clippings, tree branches, whatever, into their uh, buckets and the garbage cans. You need to drill a couple of holes in the bottom. You get the rainwater collecting in the bottom with that plant material, that starts to decompose. You could not make a better rearing medium for mosquitoes. In the Florida Keys, the mosquito season coincides with the wet season. While mosquitoes are present year round, Starting in May and ending in October, the number of mosquitoes explodes as rain soaks South Florida. There are about two dozen species down here, give or take. Uh, they're very abundant. Some of them are very abundant. Uh, the most abundant is the black salt marsh mosquito. That's the one that most people complain about. Around homes, we also have two other species that are very abundant. The yellow fever mosquito, Aedes aegypti, and the southern house mosquito, which is Culex quinquefasciatus. Some mosquitoes, like the black salt marsh mosquitoes, mature from the egg hatch to adults in four or five days. When temperatures are warm and wet, like summer, the females can fly a distance of two to five miles, but with tailwinds, the same mosquito can cover upwards of 20 to 30 miles. Of the approximately 850 islands in the Keys, only 70 are inhabited. This geography requires multiple teams with complementary goals in order to achieve mosquito control. We have a domestic uh, group that uh, covers the, uh, the more densely populated areas like uh, Key West, uh, Marathon, Key Largo, and uh, what have you. The Florida statues uh, state that we can go on to any nuisance property that uh, may or could be holding water and breeding mosquitoes, which could carry diseases. Then we'll have our field inspectors which uh, cover, uh, they spend a good portion of their day wading through uh, mangrove swamps. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, then we have a, a, a group that spends uh, most of their day on the offshore islands. So they have to uh, go to these islands by boat every day and they spend their time walking back and forth on these islands looking for breeding sites. Navigating through twisting mangrove roots and knee-deep mud, these teams make sure that the breeding sites on the offshore islands are eradicated. For the smaller breeding sites, the team treats the area by hand. For large breeding areas, the offshore island team calls for the aerial reinforcements. The Mosquito Control District operates both helicopters and airplanes, and they are used for both adulticiding and larviciding. The helicopters are more precise and target small, specific areas. The fixed wing aircrafts are utilized to cover huge tracks quickly. Between choosing adulticiding and larviciding, Larviciding is preferred because it is less invasive. The larvicide that Larry and his team use is attached to the surface area of a ground-up corn cob. The larvicide is a natural occurring bacterium that easily dissolves into the wet areas where mosquitoes' larvae hatch. The mosquito larvae ingest these proteins, which cause perforations in the digestive system, killing the larvae. The larvicide is much more environmentally friendly because it doesn't harm the fish and it doesn't harm um, the birds. And you know, your pets could eat it and it's not going to harm them at all. It's just ground up corn cob with the bacteria on it. Um, and by larviciding these areas, we've, we're controlling the mosquitoes at the, at the larva stage rather than waiting till they become adults and then having to go out and spray the liquid product and kill the adult mosquitoes. The adulticiding program is done by air and by ground. A very fine mist is directed toward the mosquitoes and a droplet has to directly contact the living mosquito. The toxin in the adulticide attacks the mosquito's nervous system, killing it swiftly and it works quickly without leaving a residue. It works where it's supposed to, in the air. When we're out either adulticiding or larviciding, we, we spray at a very low altitude, um, which makes the flying a little bit more exciting. But the reason we do it is for accuracy. Um, when we're adulticiding with the airplanes and putting, killing the adult mosquitoes, right now we're flying anywhere from 100 to 150 feet. If you go in other places in Florida, they'll be as high as 300 feet. In the Keys, the Florida Keys, we have a very special situation because we have a very uh, narrow island chain that's 126 miles long from Ocean Reef to Key West. And in order to accurately uh, spray and have the, the uh, product drift through the areas that we want it to drift through, we have to stay at a much lower altitude. Methods and technology employed by the Mosquito Control District ensure that they only hit areas in need of spraying. They use high-tech mapping software and equipment on the aircraft specifically designed to enhance accuracy. There is little collateral damage. Everything is much more uh, technical 
now than it uh, than it used to be. Uh, all of our uh, aircraft, we have them um, equipped with electronic uh, devices so that they can uh, uh, they can program into that uh, aircraft uh, uh, guidance system the spot that they want to treat. They can put that card in their uh, in their computer and take off, and that will tell them the direction to go to get to that spot. It'll tell them when they get there, and it'll uh, make a record of every swath that they make to, to spray that. And it'll be a permanent record that you can pull out, and you can see. You can even tell if uh, one uh, swath left uh, space between it and the one uh, next to it. The importance of minimizing collateral damage is magnified by the number of preservation areas on both land and sea in the Florida Keys. Great White Heron National Refuge, National Key Deer Refuge, John Pennycamp State Park, the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, the list goes on. So the Florida Fish and Wildlife Service funds research projects to examine what effects the compounds used to control mosquitoes have on the surrounding environment. The field work is being conducted by Dr. Richard Pierce from Moat Marine Laboratories, and the laboratory work is conducted by Dr. Gary Rand from Florida International University's Southeast Environmental Research Center. The intent of our study overall is to see how much of mosquito control pesticides, these are specifically the adulticides, uh, will be uh, landing on surface areas. We use uh, glass fiber filter pads to collect deposition of the adulticides that are applied either from truck or another one is applied in the morning by aircraft. And as it deposits, uh, as it would be depositing on, on the ground or on leaves, we collect it on filter pads to look at the uh, amount per surface area and then we also collect leaves, uh, leaves from plants that would be used by butterflies or plants that might be eaten by the key deer. And this tells us how much of the pesticides these organisms would be exposed to as they would ingest it. Dr. Pierce's field team collects the leaves before the adulticiding to determine what is already present, and then they collect it at specific intervals after the applications to see how much material is deposited immediately and then how long the pesticides stay viable in the ecosystem. The quicker the adulticide deteriorates, the less harmful to the overall environment. The thing that we uh, run into in conducting a mosquito control program in the Keys that uh, dictates how we do it more than anything else is the sensitive uh, ecological nature of the Keys. The environment in the Keys is different than any other place in the world. Uh, we are operating completely within a national marine sanctuary in the Keys. Mosquitoes play an integral role in the food chain. Mosquito larvae are an important food source for fish, birds, and some aquatic insects. Some people would like to see mosquitoes totally eradicated from the Keys, but to do so would result in a disastrous domino effect. We're not on a mosquito eradication uh, program. Uh, nobody would want to live somewhere where mosquitoes were eradicated, frankly. They're an integral part of the, uh, the food chain, the natural environment. Our mandate under state law is simply to reduce the number, to reduce the number. We are not here to exterminate anything and uh, people in the public need to, need to understand that. You know, you're, if, you're, if you're moving to South Florida, mosquitoes are going to be part of your life. Mosquitoes are a part of life in South Florida, but not like the old days. There is a direct correlation between mosquito control and Keys development starting in 1950. At that time, about 90% of the population lived in Key West, where the Navy conducted mosquito control programs. The rest of the Keys, where there were no control programs, were borderline uninhabitable. And to give you an idea of what uh, 
has happened as a result of mosquito control. Uh, the population in uh, the Keys was, uh, at the time was a total of 30,000 people. 27,000 of those lived in Key West and only 3,000 lived in the uh, rest of the Keys. Today, we have about uh, 78 or 79,000 people living in the Keys and we still only have about 28 or 29,000 living in Key West. And uh, the rest of them, but, uh, almost uh, two times uh, that amount, are living in uh, uh, the, the rest of the Keys. The survival of the Keys, in my opinion, is uh, largely dependent on effective mosquito control. Mosquitoes are a bother, and potentially deadly, and mosquitoes need to be controlled, but not at the expense of the Keys ecology. The ecology sustains the economy, and there would be few visitors without the pristine and unique Keys ecology. However, there would be no tourists if there were mosquitoes, like before 1950. Control without eradication, this is the razor's edge that the Florida Keys Mosquito Control District navigates every day. Not an easy task.